Well, now let's get into it. Section or unit 1.4. Let's see how we solve absolute value equations. So let's begin with this simple examples. And then uh, hopefully you will be, you know, taking uh, more practice and you'll be able to, you know, make it easier every time as you practice, okay? So based on what we learned about absolute value, we are going to start with this simple exercise. One of the main things I want you to remember is that you make sure that the absolute value bars are completely isolated. Think about it as if you were doing solving for a variable. We're first going to focus on solving for the absolute value bars, okay? So at this point, this example A, the absolute value bar or absolute value is completely isolated. That's what we're looking for because that's when we can come up with this analysis, all right? Remember this. No matter what it's, in, what it's inside, if I do this, the absolute value of something, whatever is inside, has to be 10. So remember, we have, in this case, since we have a positive number, we have two possibilities. What are those two possibilities? Well, while I wrote that, hopefully you thought about these two options, that what is inside is a 10, but also what is inside is a negative 10, okay? With that in mind, now you can say this. If the absolute value of this expression is 10, it means that this expression, p minus 3, has to be equal to this 10, or it can also be equal to negative 10. What I'm doing here is that as I do this analysis, then I will have to solve two simple equations. Now you can proceed. What is the last step to solve this? Well, I'm adding 3, and this is one of the solutions, p equals 13. But also, I take into account the other possibility where this expression can also be negative 10. And now, adding 3, I say that P can also be negative 7. So, as you can notice, there are two possible answers to this equation. When you get a positive number outside or on the right, when on the left the absolute value is completely isolated there is nothing multiplying here or nothing adding or subtracting when we did that then we can just split it into two simple equations that you can now solve and find the two solutions now with that in mind let's take a look at the second example I cannot do the first analysis I did here because the absolute value is not isolated yet. So I'm going to make sure I do that first. What do I do first? I need to get rid of this 7 and then I need to get rid of this 4. Is that the right order? I don't think so because we first subtract 4 on the left of the equal sign and on the right of the equal sign. I do that. I can rewrite 7, absolute value of 2c minus 6. This is canceled, and this equals 20. Uh, sorry, 32 minus 4 is a 28. Can I perform that analysis already? I can't, because I need to make sure that this 7 goes away. How? I divide by 7. With that, this 7 goes away, and I can perform this division. In this case, the division is a 4, and now I can do the analysis. What are the two options, because this number is positive, so that the absolute value of whatever is inside, you get a 4? Well, the two options are that this 
number inside is a 4 or that this number inside can also be a negative 4. Taking that into account, I can state that this expression, 2c minus 6, can be equal to 4, and let me erase this, but it can also equal, I'm going to write it here, 2c minus 6 can also be equal to negative 4. And with that in mind, I'm going to solve this equation and this equation independently so that I obtain the two solutions. I add 6 on both sides and eventually c equals 5. And now let's do the same here. 2c equals I add 6 here so that I get a 2, so c equals one after I perform the division. I'm skipping some steps because I assume that you already know what I am doing. But the fact here is that we have the two solutions. In the next few videos, I'm going to show you other possibilities that we might get, okay?